Good morning. Welcome, everybody. I am, help, I am happy to be here today talking about NetMap Forward. That is a user land application we wrote it to test and verify how NetMap would work with as a router. For those who don't know me, I am Luis. I work for NetGate. And uh, I work uh, doing an embedded stuff in FreeBSD. I have worked with Raspberry Pi 2, Win, and, and all that kind of stuff. But we are talking about NetMap Forward today. What we did here was um, sorry. NetMap Forward was a simple thing that we tried to do to test the routers on based on NetMap. What we did, we just uh, we just get all the fast forward path from the network stack and FreeBSD and made it uh, user land code. Let's talk a little bit about NetMap. What is NetMap? Most of you should know already, but NetMap is a framework for high-speed packet I.O. It can easily reach the 10 gig, and which means 14.8 million packets per second. That is kind of difficult to reach. NetMap is device and OS independent, which means it runs on Linux, FreeBSD and even Windows. On FreeBSD, NetMap has native support for those interfaces. There is no laser pointer. Sorry. So those are the support of the device on the NetMap on FreeBSD. But NetMap is not limited to those interface because it can work with any interface in an emulated mode that of course is not, has not the same performance of the native drivers, but still works. You can run NetMap forward with any kind of device or network dev interface that you have on your machines. NetMap forward, we want to make it simple, so it was easier to take the FreeBSD code and put it in the, um, in the user land program and make it uh, a full router based on what we ha have in FreeBSD that was called fast forward. Let me see where, okay, so how, what looks like your network stock in a regular system? Usually you have your hardware that is your network interface card and the rings of the network interface card. The kernel talks to the hardware, the applications talk to the kernel, and most importantly, the kernel implements all the protocols you need. So you have ICMP, ARP, NDP, UDP, on that kind of stuff, and the applications use that protocols uh, to well-known APIs, which make uh, the life of everyone easier, of course. What happens when you run NetMap is that you bypass completely the kernel, which gives you speed, but on the other hand, you lose all the implementations you have on, on the kernel. So, basically speaking, you are out at your own. You have to do all that for yourself. 
but that is not completely true. We will talk about that later and show how we, how we did this, how we work around uh, through this. Let's talk a little bit about NetMap Forward and how it works. NetMap Forward was designed to require little to no configuration at all. How it does that? NetMap basically only needs the IPs and the interfaces in the for our building. It's all routing table, ARP table, NDP table, and all that stuff. So how it works? You need a working setup. You have to be uh, your system, your router works working with FreeBSD as it usually as in. So what happens when you run NetMap forward? You just point the interface you have. It will read the IPs on the interface. It will use that IPs. It will build the routing tables and all that stuff. So when you have a working system, you just point the right interface. It will read all it needs from the interface. This gives you the automatic callback to the kernel forward because once you stop the net map forward, the kernel will take over and just continue to run. Th you can use any number of network interface card. We support VLAMs and we speak IPv4, IPv6. It needs to keep its all routing tables, the ARP tables, NDP, and all that stuff. At this moment, it's single thread. We'll talk about that later. What we did to fix that problem of it when you lose all the kernel implementation was a thing that is a little bit simple and already provided by NetMap. So we simply bridge the packets through NetMap when it's necessary. When you put on a network card on the NetMap mode, you disconnect the kernels, the kernel ring from the harder ring. But on user land, you have the access to both of them. So any packet that comes from the harder could will flow through the NetMap and then back to the kernel. This is kind of a simple thing to do in NetMap. And doing that way, it was simple enough and your system works just as before. You have no difference. You can use all the network stack without any difference. As I said before, we use uh, the code from fast forward in FreeBSD. And basically, what it does is when a packet is received, first thing we check is if the packet is addressed for us. If the, the, uh, the packet is addressed for us, we just bridge it back to the roast ring, and the kernel see that packet as it used to be normally. If the packet is, is not addressed to us, then it goes to the net map forward forward in engine. What you have here is once the, the packet uh, we see the packet is not addressed for us. We need to get the, the route for the next rope that where it's come our routing table. And then we still need the layer two address, the MAC address of the next rope. That keep very and we keep that on our ARP and NDP tables. Once we have both information from our next hope and the address of our next hope, we can forward the, address, the packet to the next interface we're going to use it. 
it's kind of simple. There is no much secret in that. When uh, the packet comes from the rose ring, it's uh, almost uh, it's ev uh, almost uh, we can just bridge it directly through the heart of the ring because uh, when the kernel is transmitting a packet, we usually we don't have much to do with that. It uh, really needs to be sent to the interface. So doing that, we have get you covered using uh, the kernel network stack without any difference. You can still use uh, the that interface to use with your BGP router and all that stuff. This is how we have uh, conducted uh, our tests. We have used the conductor that is a software written by GNN. It can be instructed to run the test for us, uh, different tests. Uh, so it applies the configuration to the source, sync, uh, to the router, and runs the test. And it, it, the software can do that in an automated way. So we can test different things quite fast and without manual intervention all the time. So next we have a, a simple example of how we sh can use NetMap forward. I'm not sure that everybody can read this, but uh, what we have here is two interfaces and one VLAN. We have the NCXL0 and CXL1 with IP address. So this is a working system. Uh, the packets just flow to the kernel as you normally would do. So what you need to, to run NetMap4 is just pass the interface name if you want. That's it. That's how you do, and you are ready to go. NetMap4 doesn't need any setup at all. It will pick the interface, the IP from the interface, build the, its all routing table based on that, and you are ready to go. NetMap4 has a simple clean interface for troubleshooting and that kind of stuff. It is very simple. I don't like it uh, the way it is, but it works for now. Uh, and you have the same commands you usually have on FreeBSD, so you should have no difficult to use this. It's very, very, very uh, the same of the FreeBSD, the same output and all that stuff. So you have ARP, NDP, route, if config and all that stuff inside the CLI for NetMap forward. Well, let's talk a little bit about numbers. What you see here is the size of the packets tested. So we have from 64 bytes to 1500 bytes, and the number of packets per second we have here. But we are talking here about thousands of packets per second. So this first number is what the kernel can do. This is on an uh, old version. This is, has uh, something like uh, uh, six months, so maybe it's different right now. But this is what we can do without fast forward. This is just kernel forward for all the size of the packets. This one is the fast forward. So this is test on this machine, or a, a reference. And here you see what we, this means in terms of uh, bandwidth. And here, of course, we have the net map forward performance. So we can see there is a considerable improve in forward speed in FreeBSD using NetMap forward. 
And the idea of NetMap Forward was uh, help us to improve the FreeBSD Forward. Uh, it, we are not sure NetMap Forward is a tool that you should run in your router, but it's a tool that should be will help us to make it better. So we can do almost line eight from 1024 up, but from 15 and 12, we start to have uh, issues too. But anyway, it's still way better than the fast forward in kernel. Of course, NetMap Forward brings all kinds and all sorts of problems because we have to implement all that alone. So fragments uh, and all that mess has to be done in NetMap Forward. And some of those things are not ready to be used. Here we can see how NetMap Forward scales on different uh, CPUs. So here we have the device under test. We have the different network interfaces used during the test and the rate for kernel forwarding, fast forward, and NetMap forward. As you can see, we have almost always forward five times the speed of the kernel routing. It's uh, pretty impressive. There is lo a lot of love contention. There's, uh, the kernel uh, does, uh, runs the packet uh, to the completion. So uh, there's a lot of small things that in the end had a, had a great impact in the final performance. But what we, we are still missing and it's missing here, the uh, fragments is not here, but we do not handle fragments in, I, in NetMap Forward. That one is uh, all the reasons because you should not run NetMap Forward in your router, at least at this point. NetMap is not NetMap Forward, but NetMap doesn't support hardware checksum. I have a path for this, but I have to touch all the drivers because this need to be implemented on the driver, on each driver we support on the system. So I have it for one or two different network interfaces, but uh, still need to finish uh, and add the support to all the interfaces we support. We want ACLs. We want fast ACLs, stateless ACLs. We want VXLAN and probably NAT. Capsicum is an interesting thing to, to have in such a system that runs at root in your router. We need to go to multi-threading, but we'll talk about that later. There is a lot of things to do to improve um, the things here. Uh, yeah, all that numbers are based on a single thread application. So this is what we can do using a single CPU in, uh, in the Xeon. We are not taking, uh, we are not using any of multi-thread uh, improvements at this time. So here it is. Why is not multi-thread? Well, I have tried a lot. And it doesn't work, it doesn't scale uh, how it should do. One of the things that, make it, that doesn't help, the NetMap rings, they do not resemble the NIC rings. So if I have received a packet on the second ring of the some interface, I will not see that packet on the second ring of NetMap. 
NetMap it will do its own stuff, and I will see that packet being run on, or, uh, on the first ring. It's a little bit complex. So when this happens, I lose the RSS. I lose a lot of things that will be really, really important to support Moot Thread. I can, I can set a, a I can set every uh, ring of my network interface card to run on a specific CPU, but once it, that goes to NetMap, I lose all that information. So I have no guarantee that I can have uh, on thread and user land running on the same CPU that have received the packet on the hardware, and this is bad. I have no way to write a packet to a specific network interface card ring. So if I want to send a packet on the fourth ring, I cannot do it with NetMap as it is today. And there is some room for improvement on the TCS path uh, with a uh, TCS pool that uh, should be on by default, and it is on by default, but it seems like it, it does not do what it is in the manual. So I was expecting that Luigi would be here, so we could talk about that, about that, but that didn't happen. Uh, so is NetMap broken? No, NetMap is not broken, but there is room for improvement. And should not be that difficult. This is based on FreeBSD kernel. The fast forward, if you see the fast forward, yeah, FreeBSD 11. Yeah, but uh, I don't have how to use that on the user lane because I cannot s really uh, know what ring that packet has come. And RSS, I need to keep the packet ordering and put out the, the same pack, the packets that for that flow in the same ring. And I cannot do that with NetMap. The ring, the NetMap ring. Okay. So. Basically, that is what we have for NetMap. Okay. He's here? I want to have a, a, a live presentation here, but th it was not possible to to that to do that in the uh, these days. Was really crazy. Anyway, uh, well one important thing: uh, the NetMap code that you have in GitHub uh, it doesn't support IPv6. Uh, the NetMap was really quick to write because I was using the FreeBSD code. So I have, I think I have done that in kind of uh, two months. And, but the first release took almost six months to be completed because I was working just part time. Uh, but after the, the first release that is on GitHub, I have a, did another round of uh, improvements and I have an IPv6, NDP, all that kind of stuff working, but I'm still merging back the code to the GitHub. So you should see the code really soon. Okay, guys, I think that's it. It's very simple, right? Because NetMap is just the NetMap forward. You just need a working system, point your interface to it, runs, 
and see the difference it makes. But at this point, it's not really a tool for you to run on a router, but it's more a tool for you to uh, for you check, analyze, and do all kind of tests on your setup and see what what you can do better. Uh, use another tools like the trace and that kind of stuff to help you find the bottlenecks on kernel and on other applications you may have. Yeah, that's it. Questions? Maybe that. Uh, Please send me. Yeah, before NetMap forward, uh, all the applications that we could find were just bridges. So you have a NetMap bridge, even NetMap IPFW only works as a bridge. So there's no routing. It's very different to uh, write that kind of stuff because on a bridge, when you receive a package, you know the interface you have to write the package. It's kind of simple. But on that map forward, we have to run to the routing table, find your destination, find which uh, nick we have to write the package. It's a little bit more complex than that. Please. Yes. We have, really? yeah, we, uh, this is the version that is still merging back, but uh, once it builds the, its routing table, it uh, starts to listen to the uh, routing socket, and it keeps the, the, all the, the table updated. If it adds a new address to the interface, it added the interface to the, the EP to, the, to NetMap forward, all that stuff works. We have an ARP table, we have an NDP table, all that stuff in the... No, no. Uh, we don't have a, a, our CLI. Uh, it doesn't support that kind of thing. It's just for troubleshooting. So you can see the configuration of the interface, if config, but it does not accept comments. You cannot change the IP. You have to change IP on FreeBSD, and we we'll see that difference, and uh, we'll apply the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have done some, but uh, it's not a, uh, we haven't done this properly. So we don't have uh, numbers that we trust right now to publish. But uh, it's not that bad. It's of course, there are some, some impact in some way, but it's not bad. It really works. Uh, the routing table is actually and Radix table from FreeBSD is standard, so you have no difference. Uh, NetMap forward as a role wor works really, really, really close to what FreeBSD does because it is FreeBSD code running on user land. It's the routing table from, from FreeBSD, but as there is a, an advantage to be a single thread we have removed a lot of blocks. So that helps a lot. No, uh, the idea, we have done tests with TPDK too. We have seen uh, 14 million packets per second with 
DPDK. But DPDK, we can use the, the rings from the network card and uh, more efficient in one in form that it's easier for us in the, in the application. Uh, the problem I said about the, uh, the rings that they are not uh, match the hardware ring, uh, this is solved on DPDK. So threaded applications works better on DPDK. And that's why you can have better, a lot better performance with DPDK. Uh, one of the things we do when uh, the Bruce Ring uh, sends a packet to the network interface card, we actually uh, look at the packet. So if it's an ARP or uh, an, an NDP packet, we use that information to uh, build our own table. I'm not sure if that was clear, but uh, we have two modes of operating uh, NetMap forward. Uh, we have a um, test mode where I can disconnect the Bruce Ring, and then NetMap forward implements all the ARP resolution, the NDP. But when it's running with the the Bruce Ring connected, it just look at the at the packets passing for ARP and NDP and get the, the MAC address and all that information without really acting as an ARP uh, resolver and all that stuff. The kernel does the job and we just use the packet and get information from, from it. So uh, the kernel has its table running and we just clone that in NetMap forward Any more questions? Uh, our motivation for do that was uh, really have a, a software that we could use to analyze the difference performance, uh, performance uh, with the kernel routing. We have uh, another team working on a DPDK solution. So we are using that to find the bottlenecks on the kernel routing and see if this could be a double solution for what we are trying to do on our next generation file. Not Sorry. Uh, yeah, we are not uh, looking at small systems here, but what uh, I do not know if you, I do not know if, have you seen the RCC that NetGate sells? It's a small Atom, uh, six gigabit port, and that's very, very, uh, looks a lot like that, like this one. So uh, even on that small machine, we can do a uh, line height forward on gigabit ports. So it's, uh, it's an interesting improvement for us because uh, on the kernel, it's limited for half of that or some sort. No. But uh, so just a real question. Uh, we have a uh, small system today, uh, which is not, not completely ARM or something completely different. But we have a box in the office which is actually supposed to work on this uh, application. And it has a support uh, with the operator for the network. So I'm quite happy that it's not a target. But we are aiming to, to bigger systems and <laughs> reach a 10 gig line uh, uh, rate. So NetMap forward will probably help us to get there.
questions? Exactly. Yeah. I'm happy that it's someone here that we can talk about that. Uh, Luigi is not here, but uh, NetMap needs uh, a little bit of improvement to support that better. Any more questions? Yep. Wow. I will do that because uh, Well, we have the uh, the. Do we have the GitHub?